Okay, everybody, welcome. Again, my name is Hamid. I'm a certified instructor from ASM Educational Center. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about a topic uh, which is called VPC peering versus VPC transitive. So let me, this is a notice. I'm going to talk about Amazon AWS Gateway, okay? Here, we're going to do lab. We will have a three VPC as follow. If you remember that VPC do not offer a transitive peering. In order to make a peering between all VPC, we need to make sure all VPC are peered together. And this, that takes a lot of time. That is, if VPC one peering with VPC two, again, remember that VPC means what? Virtual private cloud, okay? If VPC one is peering VPC, then we talk to VPC two and VPC two and, and VPC two is peering VPC three, then VPC one cannot peer with VPC three. So that's called, it's not transitive. In order all talk together, we have to do full mesh peering, okay? Now AWS came with the idea of what? VPC transit gateway. So what that means right here, I have a picture. We have VPC A, which is 10.1.0016, 10.2.0016, and 10.3.0016. I wanted these guys talk to these guys, okay? I want everybody to talk to each other. You want everybody to talk to each other, I have to peer between A and B. Then I have to peer between B and C, and then I have to peer between A and C, and then I have to peer between C and A and everywhere else. That's a lot of work is, okay? So Amazon came with the idea of what? Transitive what? Gateway, okay? They used to have a VPC peering. That's what it used to be, but this is new stuff that they do right now, okay? And also you can take these, talk to, if you have it on site, another like headquarter, okay? So this is what we follow. This is called hop and spoke topology. What that means, hop and spoke topology means that this VPC4 will act as a hop and the rest of the VPC will be a spoke. So that means this is gonna act like a hop, this guy, this guy's gonna act as spoke. That's what called hop and spoke what? Topology, okay? All right. For example, VPC one will be spoke, VPC two will be, and so on will be spoke. After you finish all EC2 instance in each VPC, we'll be able to talk to each other, okay? So what we're gonna do, we have to set up this infrastructure, okay? So I need one VPC one, VPC two, VPC three. I wrote down here, and these are the IP address we're gonna use that. We're gonna use, uh, sorry about that, right here, okay? So we will need to create a VPC 1, 10, 0, 0, 16. Okay, I need to create this VPC first, then number two, and then number three, okay? So when I go to console right now here, this is my VPC, I'm at Northern Virginia right now, okay? So I go to VPC right here. This is called default VPC. So I just run a default VPC. So that come by system, okay? So we don't want to have that. We're going to create new VPC, okay? And the best way to do, you want to give a nice name. VPC, again, VPC means virtual private cloud. Just, Im just imagine if you own infrastructure, VPC one, then I call that 10.1.0.0 slash 16. That's just a name is, this name can be anything. This is very important, 10.0.0.0 slash 16. A slash 16, if you don't know what that, what that means, it's nothing, it's like it's such a big network, okay? You have a humongous network in here, we have it here, okay? So I come down, I just create this VPC, close. So I create this VPC right here, okay? Now, not, not only you create VPC, you have to do a bunch of other stuff. If you look at the left side, we have a subnet, we have a routing table, then we have internet gave it, okay? So we have to create all of this. Now I go to the subnet on the left side. These are default. So what I did before I start the video, I write everybody default subnet. These are default. We don't want to do that. So I'm going to create my own subnet, okay? So this is my VPC. I'm going to create a subnet. I'm going to call this subnet 10.1.1.0 slash 24, okay? And then I'm going to put it on this VPC one. Okay. Now I've already done what that means. It's just that there are different districts. I'm going to put the one A. It doesn't matter which one I put. 
Then this is the name is, so you gotta be careful here. I'm gonna put 10.1.1.0 slash 24. So basically what I did, oops, sorry about that. What I did, this huge network, I have it right here. I created a subnet, okay? And I call that, let me give you name, this name, public subnet. Let me call this public subnet, okay? I'm gonna create another subnet. I call it, call that private subnet. We're not gonna use that, I just wanna make exam 10.1.2.0 slash 24. Then I'm gonna put on VPC1, then I'm gonna put different alphabet zone. Again, it doesn't matter right now. And then I'm gonna put 10.1.2.0 slash 24. So what that means, I have huge network right here, 10.1.0.0. Then I create a bunch of subnets. I create subnet one, and subnet two, okay? So that's that part. Now, if you look at the, my notes, let me show my notes right now. I said that we will need to create VPC one, okay? And also create IGW attached to VPC one, then we create a public subnet, this in subnet one. So after creating VPC right here, subnet, I'm gonna go, they call it internet gateway. Internet gateway means in order to get you access to internet, you have to have some kind of access. This is default, but I'm gonna attach, just imagine internet gateway as your what? Like home, your home, you wanna to connect to internet, you have to route it. So I'm gonna create an internet gateway. So I'm gonna click here. I'm gonna say that VPC one IGW, okay? Which is 10.1.0.0. Slash 69. That's just the name is okay. I click that, click close. Okay, so this is internet gateway right here. Now I look at the difference. This is attached as this is the default. This is what I did. So what I have to do, I highlight this guy, I go to action and attach to my what VPC. And of course, I have to attach it to the first VPC. Okay, click attach. Okay. The next thing I have to do, I wrote down my notes right here. Okay. Now, then attach and attach to VPC. Then we create something like that. As we see, when I create VPC 1.10.0.16, the AWS has created a routing table for me. Let's give this name. This was created by system at, at, and I, I'm going to give it that name. So I'm going to copy this. Control C. So what I'm saying right here, so you have VPC, you have subnet, you have internet gateway, then we have routing table. This is the default routing table list, which I wrote on default right here. How do I know that? Because that's my default right here, default. Now look what happened, the system created this for me. So that's what I'm gonna do. So this one, I'm gonna highlight this. I'm gonna set this here. I'm gonna give this name. I said, this was created by system when I what? I create this VPC. So anytime you create a VPC, a system create the routing table. Again, what is the routing table? Allow you to get access to internet. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create my own routing table. So I click here. I said that routing table for, for VPC one ten dot one dot zero dot zero slash 16 access to internet okay then i'm gonna give it to connect to this guy vpc1 okay close so i create right here see a routing table let me put custom i put the word custom that means we did that so custom writing for the again Anytime you want to get access to internet, you have to create a what? A routing table. Now notice that when I highlight that, I want to have a route tab, and then I have what? Subnet what? Association, okay? So I'm going to go to route tab. When I come down, I say edit route, 
by default, every PC on the network 10, they can talk to each other. If you have they 10 can talk. But in order to get access to internet, I have to add a route there. So I'm gonna click out. I'm gonna put 0, .0, 0, 0 slash zero, okay? Then here, I'm gonna point to my what? Internet gateway, right here. Say what? Route. Let me close that. So what does that mean? Again, look at this. When you boot up any PC, later on when you're gonna see that. When I, let's say on my subnet, if I, my subnet, I boot up a PC, it has 10.1. something, then the next one is 10.1.2. something. Anything between these IP addresses, they said local. But anything else, like it, if you wanna to go to internet, you gotta use this, IGW, okay? That's that one. The next thing you have to do, they have something called summary, they have a round, they have subnet association. Subnet association, that means you have to tell it which subnet goes what. So I click subnet association. Now here, see that? One is a public, one is private. Of course, I don't wanna check private. I just have to what? Put my public inside that what? Routing table, save, okay? So this is what I've done so far. Let me show you again one more time. As we see, I created VPC1, 10.0.0 slash 16. AW has created a routing table for me. Let's call it his name, blah, blah, blah. I've done that. I need to create new custom routing table and call it public routing table for that. Goes to internet, then I add the 0, 0 and I point to IJ and call it that, okay? Remember that makes sure you go to subnet association and associate with that with above custom routing table, okay? Then I have to do the same concept for what? VPC2 and VPC3. So I have to create the same thing again. So we go back again to my VPC in the top, your VPC right here. This is network tennis. Now remember my diagram? Right here. I need what? VPC 10.1, 10.2, and 10.3 in order to do slab. So I'm going to create another VPC. I'm going to call that VPC2, 10.2.0.0 slash 16. Okay. Here, I'm going to put what? 10.2.0.0 slash 16. Okay. And then I'm going to leave our default. Let's create a VPC2. That's VPC2. Now, then I have to do, I have to go create a subnet right now. I have a bunch of subnet. I'm going to create another subnet. So I'm going to call that public subnet 10.2.1.0 slash 24. And then I'm going to put inside the VPC2 because that's 10.2 network is, okay? And I'm going to put in 1A, it doesn't matter which. Then I'm gonna put 10.2.1.0 slash 24. Again, remember that slash 16 is a big, big subnet, but I'm gonna put a dot one, okay? I'm gonna go down, create that, close that. Then I'm gonna create another subnet. I'm gonna call that, let's call it private. We're not using, I'm just making a private subnet. 10.2.2.0 slash 24. I click on my VPC, which is will be right here. Then I go to here. And then here I put 10.2.2.0 slash 24. Again, for those people who know about network, a slash 16 means huge network. A slash 24 means a part of subnet. So I create that. Okay. So I have a bunch of subnet. The next thing I'm gonna do, I have to create internet gateway. Same thing I did that, I have to create another internet gateway. Because each VPC need their own internet gateway, okay? So if you have a three VPC, you have to have three IGW. So I'm gonna create another internet gateway, I call that VPC2 IGW 10.2.0.0 slash 24, that's the name is. Now again, you see that VPC2 right here is detached. So I have to go action and then attach to VPC and we attach it to what? VPC2. So what that means, you have one VPC, one internet gateway. You have another VPC, another internet 
it gave another VPC, another Intel gave it. So that's attached. I've done that. Then I have to create a routing table. Now again, same thing before, remember that this was from the beginning. So the system, look at this, system create that for me. So I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna write, this is what happened right here, exact same thing. The system create a routing table for me, but I'm gonna use a custom. I'm gonna write down here again. This was created by system when I created my VPC, oops, sorry about that, VPC 210.2.0.0 slash 24. Okay, but what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do custom routing table. So custom routing table, I said that custom routing table for VPC Two, which is 10.2.0.0 slash 16 to get into internet. Then I'm going here, I go back to VPC2 and then what? Create. Okay. Oops, sorry. So this is, let me see, which one is this? This is dot two. Let me, let me type it. Okay, very good. Now I'm gonna highlight this. Oops, sorry, I didn't get it. Let me change the spelling. Okay. Okay. All right. Oops, it didn't get, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna highlight that, then I'm gonna go back to the route. Same team will be D, we have to click edit route. Now look at this, this is local. That means any PC with 10.200, they can talk. But what we're gonna, we're add route 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0 slash zero. Then I'm gonna go point to my internet gateway and I'm gonna pick VPC2. Save route, click close. Then the next thing I wanna do, I have to go to subnet association. So I go edit subnet association, I'm gonna make sure I put my what? Public subnet, because these are for public. I'm not gonna put my private. I click save, okay? So I look at my notes again. Oops, sorry, not that one. Right here. So right now I'm right here. I would do same concept. I have to create VPC2, I did that. I create public subnet, I did that. I create IGW and attach VPC2. I create a routing table and that. Now I gotta do same thing for what? VPC3, I gotta do exact same thing, 10.3.00. So I go back again, I go back to your VPC in the top, I have VPC1, VPC2, I create VPC, I call that VPC3, 10.3.0.0 slash 16. And here the number is gonna be 10.3.2, sorry. 10.3.0.0 slash 16. Go down, create that. Okay. So I create VPC3 right here, everybody, okay. Then what I'm gonna do, I have to go see, you gotta go in order, VPC, subnet, internet gateway, the routing table. So I'm gonna go subnet, I'm gonna create subnet. I call it public, public subnet 10.3.1.0 slash 24. And I'm gonna attach this to VPC3. Okay, this is this is a big network is, but I'm gonna put 10 dot, oops, sorry, dot three dot zero dot one dot zero slash 24. Again, one more time, slash 16 is a huge network is. Now inside that huge network, I'm gonna create one public subnet. I create that, click close. Okay, then I'm gonna create another public, I'm sorry, private, private 10.3.2.0 slash 24. And then I'm gonna give it attached to VPC3. 
Then I'm going to go down to different zone. It doesn't matter which one. 10.3.2.0 slash 24. Okay. So I create that. So I create VPC. I create subnet. Then I go create IDW, intent gateway. Same thing we have intent gateway. We have to create another intent gateway here. I'm going to call that IGW3 for VPC3 10.3.0.0 slash 16. That's just a name. I create that. Okay. Oops. Let me give a better name. VPC3 IGL is much better. So I'm going to give it VPC3 IGW. Okay. As you see, this attached, attached. I'm going to highlight this one. Okay. Ah, sorry about that. Then I'm going to action and attach to VPC. Right here. Okay. So I've done that. Then I have to create a routing table. So we have to set up again. See, we have new one again. Again, what I'm going to say that this was created by system when I created my VPC3, which is 10.3.0.0 slash 16. Okay. But what I'm doing, I have to create a new routing table. So I'm going to say custom routing table for VPC3, which is 10.3.0.0 slash 16, access to internet. Okay. Go here, then I attach to VPC3 and that. So close. So right here, if I get it to other side, this is VPC. I highlight that one, then with the route tab. I click, I'm sorry, edit route right here. Again, this is means local, but I have to add that. So I'm going to put 0, .0, .0, .0, slash 0, and I point this to my internet what? Gateway. Okay. Then, not only I have to do this, I have to sub code subnet association. So I go here, I go here, and I check the, uh, I go back to make sure attach, I tell you which subnet goes to what. So it's going to public subnet, and I save it, okay? Now the other thing I'm going to do, I'm going back to subnet, there's something else, I didn't do it. For each public subnet, I click public, public, and public, uh, and public right here. So I'm going one by one. The public, I'm going action, there's something called modify auto assign IP address. What that means, anytime I put a server, automatically they're going to give what? Public IP address. Only for public IP address, I have to assign that. I'm going to save that. I'm going to go next public right here. Action, modify auto assign IP setting here. Save. Okay. The next one right here, I'll go action, modify auto assign IP address setting, and make it that. Okay, so now let's look at my notes right now. So I did all of this, okay, and subnet association. I created VPC, I created a public subnet, I created that, I created routing table, and I did subnet association, okay? Good to go. Now I go to EC2, EC2 means server, and I will boot up an Amazon Linux AMI and put on each corresponding subnet and each corresponding PC. So what I need in order to test this, because you have to test that, in order to test this, I have to have PC here, here, and here. So I'm going to boot up some PC. They call it EC2. EC2 means uh, instance, okay? So that's why I said that. I will go to EC2, and I boot up Amazon Linux, and I put on each corresponding subnet and each corresponding VPC, okay? So I'm going to call this like PC1, 10110, put inside VPC1, and that's public subnet. Then I'm going to do another P VPC, PC and another PC, okay? A subnet three. So, so we just right now is setting up right now everything. So I go back to EC2. EC2 means server right here, okay? I have a shortcut here, or it can go to services right here, 
type in EC2. As you see, EC2 means virtual server in the cloud. That's all it is, okay? I click that, okay? I click running instance. Okay, I said launch instance. Now, we just wanna pick up a server, something easy. We're not gonna do anything fancy stuff. You can do Linux, or if you want, if I type in Windows, if I search in Windows, you know, I can get Windows 2019. The good thing, Amazon always give you a free tiers, okay? But I'm going to do Linux, because it's much faster, okay? So I'm going to pick this one. It doesn't matter which one, okay? Again, okay, we're not going to do any magic. I'm going to pick free tier. Now, this is that comes. This is storage. This is the CPU, all that. Configure instance, okay? Now, here, you have to be careful. I'm going to change it to what? net.1 because I want to put in first VPC. Then I'm going to put on what? Public. Make sure you put on what? Public. Don't put on private. Public. This is enable. Add the storage. We can increase that. I'm going to leave it as that's eight gigabyte as storage is. Add tag. Okay. I'm going to look at my notes. I said, let's give a name what? VPC1. So I'm going to call this. I'm going to put right here. Add name. This name shows up. PC1. 10.1.0.0, okay? That network. Secure group. Now, by default, since this is SSH, you can get that. Again, this is for, it's not secure. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to create existing secure. I'm going to create, because there's nothing here, I have, I'm going to create new secure group. So what you want to do, you want to allow SSH, comma, ICMP is for pinges. Let's say if you want to ping test that, you have to allow ICMP. Now, if this was a web server, I want to add HTTP also. So I'm going to put right here, and I'm going to put it here, paste that. I already have SSH. I'm going to add rule. I'm going to go HTTP. Again, I'm going to say from anywhere. Again, this is not secure. You have to say my IP. My IP will be come from here, this IP address. This is more secure for SSH. SSH, when you allow it to connect to it remotely, so it has to be right here, but for sake of that, I'm just going to anywhere because it's lobbyist. And I'm going to add another one. And this will be ICMP. ICMP allow you, if you want to communicate, test the ping anywhere. Okay. Review. Okay, I'm going to see that and review this. Launch. Now here, what I have to, I, I need to create a, a keeper, okay? So I'm going to create new keeper. I'm going to call that. Linux underscore key underscore pair. Now it's very important. Remember where you download that. I'm going to put today's date for one 2020. Okay. I download, let's put, yeah, I download the keeper. So it's going to go to my download folder. It comes down launch instance. Okay. View instance. So it's booting up right now. Okay. This is booting up. Now I'm going to, I, this Buddha, I'm going to create another instance because remember we need how many instances? I need what? Three. Okay. I need another instance, another instance. Why? Because I want to test that. I want to make sure when I finish, all of these guys can talk to each other. Okay. So I'm going to launch another instance. Again, I'm going to go back again, select this. I'm going to pick the free T right here, T2 micro. Now here, be careful. You're going to pick which one. You're going to go dot two network and then make sure you pick what public pick which one public. Okay. Add storage. We're going to leave it as the default eight tag. I'm going to call this same name, which I call it right here. This is name. I'm going to call that, which is called VPC PC two. I call that PC two 10 dot two dot zero dot zero. Secure group, now here I can say what? Selecting secure, there's nothing there because it's different. I have to create a new secure group because this is different VPCs. Again, same thing again. I have to have that SSH comma HTTP comma uh, ICMP. Again, ICMP in order to what? Ping it. HTTP if this was a website, but we're not going to website, we just want to do that. So I'm going to add rule again. I'm going to pick what? All ICMP. Make sure you don't pick this guy. Pick this one. All ICMP right here. 
okay i'm gonna say anywhere doesn't matter then i'm gonna add another rule and this one's gonna be http anywhere okay come down launch okay i can create new keeper or choose existing i can use same keeper doesn't matter i can use this as i acknowledge i have that i, I can use the same keeper as launch so view so right now another service booting up now i'm going to make another instance again i'm going to pick linux this guy i'm going to pick free tier here you gotta pick what dot three network make sure you pick dot three and pick what public subnet make sure oops this should be enabled i made a mistake so this should be enabled public subnet okay make sure this is enabled right here add the storage i'm gonna leave it at eight tag i'm gonna click that i'm gonna say pc3 10.3.0.0 secure group you have to create a new secure group again ssh comma icmp comma http again by default everything's bought we have to allow it okay that's one of the security reason i'm going to copy this and i paste it here then i'm going to add rules then I'm going to go to all ICMP IPv4. And I say anywhere. I go down, add another rule. And I'm going to pick what? HTTP. Anywhere and that review launch. So I have SSH, all that. Okay. I come down here. I got all that port, everything, launch. Then I can pick same exact key pair, launch. Okay, view instance. So right now it's booting up, okay? So as you see, PC1, PC2, and PC3 is connected here, okay? Now all of these, PC1 has some private IPS. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna open a new note right here. I'm gonna open notepad. And I'm going to put some stuff here so we can see that. PC1 has private IP address equal. Let me make it this bigger so we can see better. Okay, PC1, when I click here, it has this IP address uh, right here. And copy this. Oops, I'm gonna paste that, that's PC1. Now PC2 is gonna same IP as 10.2. something. So PC2 right here, oops, sorry. This is PC2, I'm gonna copy that. Oops, sorry about that. I lost my notes right here. PC2 has private IP address. The goal is when I finish, these guys should be able to talk to each other, ping each other, okay? And PC3 has private, oops, IP address equal. So let me go PC3. One second. PC3 is right here. And here's IP address. Copy. Oops. Okay. All right. So that's that part, okay? Now let's go back here. Now, in order each EC2, each server talk to each other, I need to do VPC peering. That is VPC one peer with two. 
and then VPC2 peer with VPC3. And remember that we don't have transit peering on. So VPC1 cannot talk to VPC2. So in order to do this, I need to have a, another VPC peering between one and three. As we see this, we get a lot harder to get more VPC. You know? So in order to solve the problem, Amazon came up to transit gateway. Now I'm gonna start my actual lab on here. So up to now I had to what? Set it up again. In order these guys talk to each other, you have to have peering between dot one with the dot two, dot two with the dot three, dot three. If if dot one peering with the dot two and dot two is peering dot three, one cannot to talk to three because they don't have a transit peering. You have to do the peering. So it's going to do a lot of peering. So what they said then, hey, we're going to have a transit gate in the middle. Then everybody can talk to each other. Okay, that's the whole idea is. Again, VPC peering, it takes so much time, so much effort, okay? So that's what we're going to do, okay? So this is what we're going to start our actual lab. Up to now, I have to set it up. Oops, let me add this one person. So up to now, I had to set up the, the environment for you guys, okay? So now I'm going to start actual lab, okay? Up to now, I have to set up the environment in order to do lab, okay? Now I go in the top, I go top and click on VPC. On the right side, you see something called Transit Gateway. Let's create that and call it what? ASM Transit Gateway. Description, this will be used for VPC1, VPC2, and VPC. So I'm gonna call it ASM Transit Gateway, okay? So I go in the top, I go in top, click VPC. Or you can go to services and just type in what? VPC, which is Virtual private cloud right here. See, virtual private cloud. When you come down, there's something called peering connection. This is a long way to do that. You create pre-connection. See, when you say create pre-connection, you have to go from source to destination. It's gonna be a lot of what? Work. So if you have a lot of VPC, you have like 10 or 20 VPC, it's gonna be a lot of work if you want to ever talk to each other. So what, what you can do, you can do something called what? If you come down here, it's called what? Transit gateway, transit gateway attachment, and transit gateway routing table. These three we're gonna focus. Again, let's look at here. We have transit gateway first. Then we have what? Attachment. Then we have what? Route. So I click a transit gateway. Then I create what? Transit gateway. I'm gonna give it a name, as my note says right here. I'm going to give it ASM Transit Gateway. So that's what I'm going to give. Okay. And then for description, I'm going to say that this will use for VPC 1 and 2, 3. Okay. So I'm going to put that description right here. All right. I'm going to put 64520, don't know what that means. This is ASN number 64512, 64512, okay? DNS support, it says right here, enable domain names. Don't worry about that. VPN, all that, we're gonna leave it as enable. Default route sub association, this is very important, enable. Default route propagation, we want the route propagated. We're gonna talk more detail and the rest leave as default and we create what? Transit what? Gateway. So right now this is pending, okay? It's gonna take time. So after that, okay, has give AS for BGP that and the rest of the value as default, okay? Now I go and attach VPC1, VPC2, and VPC2 above transit gateway. So what you have to do, you have to go to the left side, click on transit gateway attachment, then pick VPC1 first and give name VPC1 and pick public sub name one. Do same concept with that. So we have to attach it. So if I go back to here, remember that we have transit gateway, then we have a transit gateway attachment, then we have transit gateway what? Route table. So we gotta do this part first. So I'm gonna say transit gateway, right? I'm gonna call it what? VPC1, that's just name, okay? Attachment, right here, let me just call that VP. Oh, I'm sorry. This one, VPC transit, I, I should, I should, oops. I, I made a mistake, I apologize. I click here. Oh, the ID has not shown up because this is not finished yet. So let me go back again. 
So we have to wait, go back to VPC. Apologize for that. I go back to right here. Make, okay, this is available right now, so that's good. So make sure this is available. I'm gonna go transit gateway attachment, clear that. Now I click this, now I see that, see that? The name show up right here, I click that one. Is it VPC, I want that, attach. Here, I just call it VPC1, okay? Then here, you have to attach which one? VPC1 first, okay? Then here, you only pick what? Public subnet, that's the key part. Do not pick what? Private, because private, we don't want to access that, okay? So only what? Public subnet. So I go down, I create what? Attachment, click close. Then I have to do another one, create transit gateway because look at my notes. When you do attachment, again, I go and attach VPC1, VPC2, M2, transit gateway. So then I gotta say create transit gateway again and click on, oops, sorry, into this one right here and call it what? VPC2 and pick VPC2, then when you do that, you wanna pick only what? Oops, oh my gosh. So I'm missing a, uh, so this lab is not gonna work completely because it's a private subnet. I should be, okay, let's do it like that. This should be public subnet. So, so that's fine, we just create attachment. Then I'm gonna say create another transit gateway. We pick this. I'm gonna call it VPC three and select VPC and we pick three. Okay. So this one I pick subnet public. Okay, right here. So public create attachment. Okay, so I did this. So VPC one, two, three. Uh, let me go back in the top. I don't know what happened. Uh, maybe subnet three. Public subnet two, I have it right here. Oh, okay, let me go back to routing to apologize for network two. Subnet association. So that's good. Um, okay, it's no problem. So after this, we have a transit gateway. We have attachment. Then what we have to do, we have to look at what? Transit what? Gateway route table. I look at my notes. Okay. So I go to the left and click transit gateway attachment. I've done that, VPC1. Then I do same thing for VPC2 and VPC3. And after five minutes, you should see, get all VPC available. So let's see, make sure everything's available before I continue. So I go back to VPC attachment right here. All is what? Available. Okay. Now, what I'm gonna do next, I do same concept for that, I've done that. After five minutes, it should be all available. I've done this part, okay? Now, when I, all is good in step 13, when I go to left and look at the transit gateway routing table, I will see all the routes from VPC1, VPC2, three in here. So route has been propagated in gateway. So what that means, let me show you what's going on here. I click on transit gateway routing table right here. When I click here, I click what? Association, I see what has been associated, all the VPC, which is good. Propagation, I should see all what? VPC. See, it has been propagated, right? Now, if I click route, I should see all network, dot one, dot two, and dot what? Dot one, dot two, and dot three has been assigned. So what that means, let me show you the diagram. What this means,
Okay, so what this means right here in the picture, this transit gateway would see the routing table from dot one, dot two, and dot three. So these guys got all the information from here, came inside here. So if you have another VPC here, another VPC, they're going to show up. The route is inside the routing table, it's going to show up everything here. But these guys cannot see each other yet, okay? So let's go back to my notes. Okay. Let's go back down, 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 down. Oops, sorry, I went too much. Okay, right here. Now, when I look at left side and trying to get a routing table, I will see all the routes from VPC 1, 2, and 3 in here. So route has been propagated. Now, if I SSH EC2 located on VPC 1, I will not be able to ping server on 10.2 network or .3. Why? Since remember that I need to go to each routing table of the VPC 1, VPC 2, and VPC 3 and add corresponding route and point to transit gateway. So what that means, what I'm saying that right here, if I go back to EC2, okay, I'm gonna go back to those server which I create that, this one. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna connect. I click connect. Now this is Linux machine is different. I'm gonna highlight this guy, okay? Now if you remember that, I download my what key right here in my what I show a folder in my download folder. Okay, right here, see Linux Keeper like that, all of that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to right click here. This this software is called this software called Git. You can download from internet. Git bash here. Okay, so that goes right here. Make sure you download folder right here. Okay, so if we go to Google, type in. Git bash right here. Download okay. You can download this that software right here. When you download that one, you install it. All you do, you're gonna go to where? Go to download folder right here, which you download your software. You're gonna right click and say what? Git bash here. So you've been download folder right here, okay? Then what you wanna do? You want to go back to your server. Oops, sorry about that. Let me find uh, my machine right here. You highlight your server right here. You click connect. And this is SSH. You got to copy this long stuff. It includes your what? Keeper, include your IP address, everything. You just copy that, right? And then what you do. You go back to here, right click and paste. Press enter. And you're connecting with saying yes. Okay. So right now I'm at network one dot one. That's the PC one is okay. They type in sudo su. Okay. This means my what? I'm super user. Now what I'm gonna do, see 10.1.18 is this guy right here. See that? This is my first IP address. Now I'm gonna try to ping. PC2. Well, let me do PC3. Ping 10.3.1.52. Now remember, I'm pinging the what? Private IP address. So it's obvious not going to work until I do my finish my what? My transit gateway. So that's what's right now. It's not pinging because it's just waiting there. Okay. And remember, I'm pinging what? Private IP address. Okay. So I'm pinging a server inside the what? inside uh, one of the VPCs. So what I have to do, go back to my notes right here. Let me explain this. It's a little bit tricky right now. For this section, you're gonna have a good networking background, okay? Look what's gonna happen. When I go to VPC one routing table, I say that you cannot ping it since, remember that I need to go each route, I have to go each routing table of the VPC one, two, and three, and add a corresponding route and point to transit gateway, okay? So this is router one is. By default, this is what we have. So what I need, I need to add this entry, 10.2.0.16, point to transit gateway. I need to add this entry, 
and then I have to add dot three network. This is for VPC one is okay. So let me go back to my routing table right here. I go back to VPC in top. I go back to routing table. And this is VPC one right here. Okay. I click that one right here. Click route. Then I go down a little bit. I click edit route right here. So that's my routing table. Oops, I forgot zero zero here. Okay, uh, hold on a second. I apologize. Oh, this was created. I don't want this. I want to go back custom. So I gotta go back to custom, not that one. I gotta go back to custom right here. Custom routing table right here. Internet. I click route. Then I say edit route. See, I have this and that. Now I have network zero zero, but I want to add what? Ten dot two dot zero dot zero slash sixteen. That means if you want to go network two, point to where? Here's the keys. Point to what? Transit what? Gateway. This is what the network section comes in the in this part. You pick that. Okay. Then you're gonna add another round. Network 10.3.0.0 slash 16. And this one is gonna be point to what? Transit gateway. Okay. Right here. Then click save routes. Oops. Oh, I have extra zero here. Sorry about that. Typo. Okay. So let's look at my routing table again. You have to understand this concept of routing table very well. See, when I say edit route, this means any PC on network 10, like 10, 1, 1 something, they can talk local. This means if you want to go network 2 dot something, go to this side, transit gateway. This means if you want to go to network three, go to here. And this means if you want to go to internet, you can go through that, okay? So I save routes. Oops. Oh, I think I close my windows. One second. Okay, let me open up from my, apologize from my Dropbox. Right here. Okay, so that's that one right here. So that's VPC one. We have a local. We have this. You have to add. We gotta do same thing for what VPC two. We have this part. Now we gotta add these two inside my routing table. So let me go to VPC two right now. I go to my VPC. I go to routing table, again to routing table, left side. I go down to custom VPC routing table, click route and click edit. Oops. Uh, yes, click route. Oh, I forgot zero, zero here, I made a mistake. Okay, zero dot zero dot zero dot slash zero. I pointed to this, I should have this. I don't know what happened, got deleted, okay. Now I'm gonna add what? 10.3.0.0, 10.3.0.0 slash 16. This network 16, you wanna point to what? Transit gateway, right here. Then you wanna add what? 10.1.0.0. Slash 16 to transit what gateway and then save routes. Okay, so let's look at that. Again, this is custom routing table. When I click routes, you gotta have this is local, this goes to internet right here. This means connect to network 10.1, point to transit gateway. This is dot three. Okay, save routes. Now I gotta do the same thing. For what? VPC number three. Okay. So I go route. Oops. I add that. I forgot zero zero. Zero dot zero dot zero slash zero. This should be into gateway. This got removed somehow. I don't know what happened. Add ten dot one dot zero dot zero slash sixteen. 
So this is transit gateway. And then you're going to add what? 10.2.0.0 slash 16 to transit gateway. Okay. Again, this is the locally, this is zero, zero, and that's say what? Routes. Okay. So look at my notes right now. So VPC3, this is local. Then you're going to add dot one and dot two transit gate. Now I switch to one of the VPC. Now I should be able to what? Ping. Let's see if I can ping there. Oops, I cannot ping it. That's not good. Let's see if I can ping it. So what we have to do, we have to what? Let me see if I can ping the other gentleman. Troubleshoot. Okay, I'm right here. Let me see if I can ping dot two. Copy this. Ping. Paste. Okay. Something is not working here, which is good. Troubleshoot, right? So what we have to do, okay, I know what's happening. Okay, let me go back, check here, custom routing table right here. I apologize. Okay, custom routing PC1. Uh, it's kind of hard to see here. One second. I'm gonna bring this down. Oh, here. Okay, I've got subnet association. Make sure this is public subnet one is. That's good, that's that one. Cancel. Let me go check VPC two, subnet association. Ah, see, I forgot to subnet association here. I gotta do subnet association, I forgot to do that. Public, okay. Save, then dot three, Subnet association, oh, save. Okay, I forgot to, I probably did on these guys, subnet association. So I had to subnet association on these guys, okay? VPC3, all that. Now let's see if it works. Now I can ping, okay? Control C, now let's see if I can ping the other one. So something wrong with the, this. I can ping between one and two, let me go three so subnet three uh routes i come down edits uh so this is cool subnet association oops i put a private i made mistake see that this is mistake is i should put in public okay Save. I go back to here. There's upper key. Now I can ping. So I can ping from what? PC. See, I'm right now what? I'm PC1 right now. See, dot one. I'm this PC. I'm right here. I can ping all of the other guys. I can dot three and then. And then 10.2.1.35. So let me ping that. Control C. Okay, so I can ping that. So let me summarize what we did. Then we're gonna take a question and answer, okay? So let me summarize what we did here. Basically what we did we created what? VPC1, VPC2, VPC3. 
inside VPC one, we put bunch of instance server, server one, server two, server three, and server one has this IP address 10 10.2 10 that and that. Okay. Now the old system was this guys talk to that guy, then this guys talk to that guy. It's a lot of VPC VM, but they said that you can do transit gateway. So what we did after we set up all this VPC, okay, I went to your VPC right here. After we set up all this VPC, I create a bunch of subnets. I create an internet gateway. I attach those. I create a routing table. I create my custom routing table. And when you do custom routing table, you have to make sure you associate correctly because I did wrong association. You have to associate that. I did internet gateway. I did this. Then I came down. I created what? Transit what? Gateway. I create a transit gateway. Then I attach that. I attach VPC1 to that, VPC2 and VPC3 to that transit gateway. Okay, I did attach that, all of that. Okay. After attaching that, which makes sure they're available right here, available, right? Then I went to gateway and see by default, this, oops, I don't have to create on the table. By default, it would see all of this network. After finishing all of this, then I went back to my what, routing table. I went back to PC1, I click route tab, and I click edit. We already have this, and we already have that. Now I, I add these two, got, this is network one is, so I add network two and network three. I point to TGW and TGLS gateway. That's one part we did that. I went to VPC2 and I, I did same thing again. I attached all of that. This is network two is, so I attached dot one and dot three. And then I went to VPC3 and I attached that, all of that. All right, so that concludes. Again, I'm gonna, um, if you have any question, any comments, again, later on, I'm gonna post this in our website. So, um, if you have any, if you go to AWS blogs later, I'm gonna post this on the website. So it's gonna be right here with all the notes. So I'm gonna stop. If you have a question or any comment, uh, this is our phone number and these are the things you can put it there for us, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pause and thank you so much. I'm gonna pause the video. Thank you and have a good day, everybody.